All right, so as discussed in the last clip, um, if we're trying to figure out what the limit uh, of f is at a particular point, or whether or not f is continuous at a particular point, then instead of dealing with this big clunky limit, it's much easier to look at um, limits as you approach along particular paths. So we take a parametrized curve, x of t, y of t, that passes through the origin at t equals zero. And then um, we can just look at the limit along that particular curve. And the limit will exist if it exists along every possible curve, which of course you can't check, but you can at least try and check uh, a few curves. And so um, a good idea in general to try is just to see what happens if we take one of the variables equal to zero. So that corresponds to coming in along one of the either the x-axis or the y-axis, or more generally, uh, to take your path to be something that looks like t m t. And so this corresponds to coming into the origin along the line y equals m x, which is every straight line through the origin except a, a vertical one. But but for that you can deal with the special case by by looking at um, just zero t. Um, however, not even this uh, can always determine whether or not a limit exists. This is the strange craziness that comes up in in higher dimensions. So let's look at the example. Um, we'll take f to be the function uh, 2xy squared over x squared plus y to the fourth. And as usual, we'll be looking at, at the origin. OK, so if we come into the origin along the line y equals mx, then uh, we're going to be looking at the limit as t goes to 0 of f of t m t. And so substituting um, substituting uh, x equals t and y equals m t into our formula, we have 2 times t times t squared all over um, uh, t squared plus, oh, sorry, I, I lost an m there. Uh, that should have been mt squared over mt to the fourth. Uh, and so let's see what happens if we do a little simplification here. Limit as t goes to 0. And uh, I guess we've got a common factor of t squared in the top and bottom. So this is uh, 2mt over 1 plus m to the fourth t squared. And uh, as, this ten, as this goes to 0, uh, both the upper and lower uh, limits exist. So the, the one on top goes to 0, and the one on the bottom goes to 1, as the m and the t part disappear. Um, so we can evaluate this one by looking at the limit of the top over the limit of the bottom, and it just goes to 0. All right, so that's telling us that whatever this function is, if we uh, come into the origin along any straight line, it has limiting value equal to 0. OK, so that sounds good. It makes it look like this function uh, is going to have a limit and, and be, maybe be, even be continuous at 0. But let's look at what happens if we come along uh, a par parabolic curve. So for this one, we will take um, our, our path c of t to be, well, let's see. So we want x to be y squared. So that's saying first uh, coordinate is the square of the second coordinate. So that means if I put a t for the second coordinate, then the first one has to be the square of the second one, right? x is y squared. OK. Um, so then the limit as t tends to 0 along uh, this path is, oh, I don't even know why I bothered to write that. That was sort of an unnecessary step. Whatever. Uh, whoop. So this is f of t squared t. And so let's see. So uh, substituting that into our formula, we have 2t squared, and then y is equal to t, so t squared. And then on the bottom, we've got t squared 
squared and t to the fourth. And so doing a little bit of algebra to clean this up, we have uh, two t to the fourth over t to the fourth plus t to the fourth, which is two t to the fourth. And that whole thing is equal to one everywhere along the path. And so the limiting value is equal to one, which good golly gosh, is not equal to zero. So the limit does not exist because we were able, we were able to find different paths toward the origin along which this function has uh, different, different limiting values. And at which point you should probably be scratching your head going, what the heck does that look like? So let me grab a, a plot. All right, so here's what it looks like um, as plotted in Mathematica, this, this crazy surface. And so um, I guess I've got the, uh, uh, it rotated a little bit here from the, the standard orientation. I wanted to give you a couple of good views uh, for, for seeing what's going on with this this crazy dastardly function. But um, so this is the um, uh, parabola opening in the um, uh, positive x direction, actually. And in the negative x direction, you see that uh, we didn't try putting uh, x equal to minus y squared, but if we had, we would have gotten minus one. And you can see there's the limiting value of minus one as you come in along that parabolic path down below. And for any other straight line uh, direction that you come in, it actually ends up taking you down to the origin. So it, um, it looks as you approach along straight lines, uh, like it should have a limiting value of zero at the origin, yet it doesn't because there's this hideous disaster that happens. And, and once again, um, there's this apparent gap right here is just an artifact uh, left over from Mathematica coughing up a hairball.